Well, you don't see this every day. A massive area of red flag warnings, fire, weather watches, all the way from Tucson to Chicago and over to Boston. And that's with a rapid warm-up, very dry air mass, and temperatures coming up close to 90 degrees in Nebraska. Now, we can see that there is snow on the ground in South Dakota, Minnesota, North Dakota, all the way over towards Michigan, but check out these temperatures. 80s at this hour in eastern South Dakota and 70s all the way into Wisconsin. 81 degrees just southeast of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. The combination of those two will trigger extensive snow melt from North Dakota into the Great Lakes, and as a result, creeks and rivers will overrun their banks and some fields will be flooded. The surface map from late this morning does show the eastern and southern part of the country under high pressure. This is an outgoing polar system which is gradually sinking southeast and modifying. You can see the dew points are in the 40s, signifying a Canadian origin. The moisture return is slow to get started in the Gulf due to this Bear Clinic weather system south of the Florida Panhandle. Dew points are in the 60s along the Texas coast, but the southerly return flow only showing 40s. This Bear Clinic system south of Pensacola will be lifting north as the afternoon goes on, and it will spread thunderstorms, showers, and some strong winds from Tampa to New Orleans. We'll take a look at that shortly. Further up to the north, another reinforcing shot of cold air. Not much of a southward push on that. Temperatures in the 40s up in North Dakota. And then out west, stormy. The Pacific, of course, stormy on pretty much every day that we've done this weather cast, and today no exception. Showery weather, some cold core convection out there in Oregon, and further to the south, a rather dry system, although San Diego and Los Angeles getting some fog. Further up north, another weather system heading for the Alaska coast. They've recorded two inches of snow at Yakutat, and up there in Fairbanks, a couple of inches on the ground as well with a Arctic system. Moving through the Alaskan interior, some very cold temperatures. And Bettles, Alaska, which I think is in the Brooks Range, was down to minus 31 this morning. That did not set a record for the month, which is minus 39, but it did set a record for the day. Then heading east into Canada, typical cold temperatures, 0 to minus 20. In Canada itself, fairly quiet, although the secluded system is moving east through Manitoba. In the northeastern U.S., northwesterly flow in New England. You can see that on the animation of the satellite. And also we've got these gravity waves in Maine and New Brunswick. As we go further to the west-southwest, we get into progressively drier and warmer air. And yesterday, a major fire in Indiana. It was big enough to be picked up 22,000 miles from space right here. That's it. Big black cloud from Richmond, Indiana at a plastics recycling facility. 2,000 people evacuated and it's expected to continue burning for days. However, Going into the overnight hours, the infrared channel takes over, and we can see that hot spot right there, but it does appear to gradually cool off towards morning. And as we go into today's imagery, don't really see too much evidence of it, maybe some faint smudging, but that could be the vegetation. We can compare that to yesterday. Yeah, that's vegetation, so it looks like the worst of that fire is over. But as we mentioned, red flag advisories and 80s showing up in Pennsylvania as we record this in 80s in Sarnia, Ontario. And in New York, 70s all the way up towards Toronto. Yeah, that's a major warm up. And even 80s up there in northern Michigan. In the southeastern U.S., a strong frontal system out there in the central Gulf. Let's take a look at the infrared imagery. 
That shows us where the significant convection is. For example, right here, very strong storms, maybe about 150 miles west of Fort Myers and some other clusters near Key West and just southwest of Fort Myers as well. And it looks like they go through cycles of developing and weakening. However, the area as a whole is lifting north as that central low pressure area moves towards Mobile. The radar mosaic picking up some of those convective bands and the stronger cells. It looks like those are still ongoing off of the southwestern Florida coast. The convective cells further to the northwest don't quite look as strong. Here's the generalized NAM forecast showing pressure, surface winds, and 1,000 through 700 millibar thickness. And that does show that it is a frontal system. Looks like the cold front is something like that right there, the warm front out towards the Florida Keys. So there's a combination of isentropic lift, steepening lapse rates and destabilization going on, and enhancement from the jet stream, which is running about like that. So going into the evening, you can see the whole thing moving north. This is going to be about 8 p.m. Eastern. Compact little 1003 millibar system south of Gulfport and then during the overnight hours that approaches the coast. And right around dawn, that's how it looks, making landfall, 1001 millibars, and looks a little bit like a little tropical system. And it moves on inland as the day goes on. And still, some convective bands out to the east in Florida and Georgia. In the southern plains, some destabilization in east Texas as the instability works on the air mass in that area. But further to the north, it is dry. And as we mentioned, snowmelt problems in the northern tier states with those 80s and 90s making their way into the Corn Belt. And there's what we're talking about. 91 degrees expected this afternoon in South Dakota. Hot temperatures as well in the southwestern deserts, mid-90s in Phoenix, and lower 90s in Tucson, Yuma, and up the Colorado River. The satellite imagery does show westerlies, and we do have a frontal system out there in California and Nevada. And that's it right there. As we mentioned, that is a dry front. And north of that, temperatures in the 30s and 40s, so not terribly cold on the cold side of the boundary. And then up there in the Pacific Northwest, as we mentioned, a cold core system. And with that, we can see the showery weather in Oregon, some of that in the form of snow in Idaho as well. In offshore, you can see all this open cell cumulus signifying a unstable environment. And we're even getting a few eddies developing out there over the open ocean. So over the next 72 hours, we're going to be seeing that high pressure area from the Pacific gradually working its way into the Great Basin and Rockies. Between now and then, lee side troughing in Colorado, 994 millibar low, east of Denver, and of course that Gulf system will be moving into the southeastern states. As the Pacific system moves into Montana, Wyoming, Utah, snow showers, this is going to be tomorrow morning, and gradually that front will sag to the east, and now we see it appearing by Friday in the Dakotas, cooling things down in that area and reaching Colorado and the Four Corners. Southerly flow picking up in Texas and the western Gulf Coast region. Let's take a look at that moisture field. Here we've got the surface dew points. The orange is going to be 60s dew points. And that yellow is going to be 50s dew points, which is marginally supportive of severe weather. So that vortex out there along the coast will be depleting the moisture further to the west and increasing it on the eastern periphery. So an increase in showers and storms in that region and a decrease further to the west. But as we go into Friday, this low pressure area becomes less of a factor in the Gulf, begins to open up and we see those 60s there in South Texas and 70s further to the south. And gradually, it looks like we've got that Pacific system starting to interact by Friday evening. That's it right there. 
only 62 points and 50s further north, so not terribly good moisture. However, that could support a few showers and storms. Gradually, that system will move out into the Gulf as we go into the weekend and dry things out, pushing that moisture down to the south. And then we watch the return flow setting up again for next Tuesday. So with a subslope flow here, 50s dew points, we could start seeing a few showers around midweek. And we'll have to see how things work out for later next week. And then just a quick look at the upper air chart zonal flow across the northern part of the country. We've got that vortex developing along the Texas coast and that closes off going into Thursday and Friday. So that's underneath this ridge right here and that gives us a Rex block configuration, but it's quite temporary. Eventually that vortex gets picked up and carried east in the prevailing flow. Towards the weekend, troughing in the central U.S. associated with a cold air advection, get those height falls helping to carve out that trough. That's replaced by ridging as we go into next week. And then we see strengthening flow in the southwestern U.S. That will probably be associated with our next chance of severe weather. Somewhere in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, the flow definitely is up there near 100 knots. So we'll check that out on the Friday and Monday show. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks to our newest Patreon supporter, Will Cowan. Thank you very much. And I almost forgot, just as a note, the newest Weather Map Handbook is in production now. So I don't have an ordering link just yet, but we will be putting that on our website at weathergraphics.com in the next week or so. So keep an eye out for that. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening. We'll see you back here in a couple days. Bye-bye.